So, what's going on, Tyler? Winston, how's it going, man? It's going good. It's going good, brother. Long day. Uh, interesting day. And, uh, yeah, trying to get some projects approved, man. Hell yeah. Still in Bermuda? Uh, yeah, here here for the here for a few days and heading back um, to the states. So we'll see awesome. how long. We'll Been a couple of weeks. We haven't done it. We, ha we haven't underwritten anything in a couple of weeks, man. I'm excited. I know. I've been dodging you. <laughs> I'm dodging you. Well, let's get to it. So um, today uh, we've got what VCA Animal Hospital in East. Elijah, Georgia. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. You already, you've already butchered me on my pronunciations of these Georgia, <laughs> of these Georgia cities, man. But yeah, that's that's what we're doing. We're looking at a VCA Animal Hospital, a veterinarian clinic in a small town uh, in Georgia, it's north north of Atlanta, a little bit, a little south southeast of Chattanooga. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, you, you want to talk a little bit about um, the, the market itself? Yeah, sure. Let me uh, let me just pull a map up here. You can get, have a better look, right? So, like I said, so this is you get pop up here. Yeah, so small, super small market. Um, it's, it's interesting because it's, it's a lot different than anything we've done so far, right? So, very small market. You can see here. It's you know, um, what is that measure distance? About you know, sixty-five miles north of Atlanta. Uh, you know, fifty miles from Chattanooga. It's a small little market, right here in the what are these the mountainous areas of northern Georgia, um, LJ East LJ. This is kind of you know, kind of one market. Um, you know, within I wanted to study this a uh, market a little bit more because this lease different than a lot of the times that we we do these is uh, only has three years left on its term. So I really wanted to understand the real estate in the market uh, and the chance of this tenant actually renewing and, and continuing in place. Because that's gonna be very important when you buy a lease that has a you know a short time frame until ex expiration. You can't just you know bank cash flows for the next 15 years. You've really gotta you've really got to take seriously the uh, probability that your tenant might leave or something might change you know three years from now. So this market um, you know, within a 10 minute drive time of this clinic, you've got about 10,000 people within 15 minute drive time, you got about 23,000 people. Um, so it's not a big market, but there's really only two vet clinics that operate here. So if you put in veterinarian, right, you're going to find two and they're basically dead even on Google, uh, on Google reviews. You've got this one we're underwriting right here and you've got one just down the road. So you've got, you know, 200, three, 200, uh, whatever Google reviews, 4.5, 4.5. Um, you would assume that so these are dead competitors for the veterinarian services within this, let's say, 15 minute drive time. Um, based on my research, vets can vets typically need, you know, six to ten thousand um, population to to maintain. Um, so if you're in a small town like this, you got twenty three thousand people. It should be able to sustain two, two veterinarian clinics ongoing. Um, this veterinarian clinic that we're underwriting specifically has been a vet since 1995 and it's been a VCA vet, uh, for, I think since 2010, so, uh, I'm not sure that's exactly right, but around 2010. So, you know, it's, it's a very established location for a vet. Um, you can see that, you know, it's just in the North end of, a, of the main retail corridor here in town. You've got, you know, a uh, number of restaurants. Hardy's Arby's, and, and then the actual real estate here on this vet clinic, as you come up, it's right off the main drag, great visibility from the main road. You've got access from the backside, um, you know, from pretty good access and uh, the best visibility right on the, the main road in town. Um, have you, do you know anything about VCA themselves, Winston? You're muted, man. Yeah, sorry about that. I did a little bit of research earlier today, uh, just looking them up, trying to get comfortable with them. I mean, very large uh, company operating in North North America, I believe, both you know 
United States and Canada, um, over two billion in revenue, over a thousand affiliated clinic, uh, clinics. So large operation. Um, I believe it was founded in 1986 or 87. Right. So um, I, I I also think that their kind of approach is just to wrap up um, veterinary clinics. Right. And so they're not necessarily you know starting them from ground up. They go and identify and acquire is, is what I believe um, um, they do. They're also the owners of Camp Bow Wow. So Camp Bow Wow um, is kind of a more branded approach, kind of more retail focused, uh, you know, good branding. I, I have one over by my house in Nashville. So um, anyhow. But yeah, you know, growing, um, I think uh, Mars Corporation um, is, which is also based out of Nashville, oddly enough, or they have a headquarters in Nashville, rather. Um, I believe, um, I believe they purchased it, I believe, like in 2017 or something like that. I, I could be wrong on that, um, but I'm pretty sure they're owned by Mars Corporation. Yeah, so I mean, you know, it's a it's a a strong guarantee. Uh, on the, there's only three years left in the lease, but you know, assuming they renew and, and stay in location, it's a strong guarantee. Um, let me just rip up the sheet here, right? So just a few details that we we glossed over. So as we said, VCA Animal Hospital. Um, this particular lot is 0 0.4 acres, right on the end of a retail strip. Great visibility. The building's 8,600 square feet. Um, you know, original lease was sorry, it was 2011 when this lease started. Original lease is 15 years. There's three years left in that with a one uh, with one five year option on the backside, right? And that's that's guaranteed by, as Winston was saying, that uh, Myers Myers uh, Myers whoever the parent company is Myers something over a thousand over a thousand clinics with VCA. So, you know, they're they're asking for this a seven cap um, net operating income is 141 thousand a year. They're asking just over two million on the purchase price. Um, so I guess how we evaluate this is very dependent on what we think is going to happen three years from now, right? If we, you know, looking at the market, looking at, um, you know, what the rent they're paying, the rents in the market, it's another thing we didn't mention. So, you know, at this price, 141,000 for 8,600 square feet, they're actually um, pretty close to, or they're, they're right in the middle of market rents, not only in LJ, but in the surrounding area, um, of this part of Northern, Northern Georgia. So they're not, you know, this isn't one of those tri triple tenant net leases where the tenant's paying, you know, double or triple the going uh, lease rate. And then when, when, then when the lease is up, you know, you have to fill it with something uh, significantly cheaper. It's not, a, not the case here. So they're paying pretty much market rent in a building they've been in that's been a vet clinic for nearly 30 years, right? And they've been there for, for 15, basically. Um, so the chance they're going to renew is quite high. So uh, when we look at this, you know, Couple more up, couple more things there, right? When we look at this, we have the acquisition cash flows. Um, operating is two percent uh, rent bumps a year, which again is something we 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 definitely look for. Um, you know, there are leases that have one percent a year or, or ten percent every five years, or even you know significantly worse than that. So the two percent rent bumps are good. Um, and then basically, the what really matters to us is the disposition analysis. Right. So we've got two scenarios three years from now. I, so I, I've set this uh, analysis to eight years. You could do it at eight or three. If you do it at three, you're doing at renewal time. If you do it at eight, you're doing at after the option. So we can look at we can look at both if, if you want. But I'm, I'm starting it at eight with the assumption that they renew the first one and then we renegotiate or, or they continue or or the tenant uh, or we retenant after eight when we have the option. Yeah, that's fair. So. so uh, I'm assuming an exit cap rate of 7.4, um, which would be tenant renews and we sell. Wow, that would be with no no upgrades to the building or you know with the same NOI uh, on a seven cap if we put $25 a square foot in today's money into the building for an adaptive reuse. You know what what would be that adaptive reuse? Um, well, if it was a vet. Well, if, if the clinic remains a vet, I mean, VCA will stay there. I can't imagine that VCA would leave and another vet would come in. So, I mean, you know, what ideas would you have, Winston, if this needed to be an adaptive reuse? If the vet, if, if for whatever reason, you know, 23,000 people stopped needing uh, a second veterinarian clinic in the area. 
Yeah, you know, uh, I would definitely think that this is going to need considerable upgrades, right? I mean, uh, it was it, it looks like it was built out for um, a vet clinic. You know, it's older construction. Um, it's going to need probably a more modernized look to it. So I would, I know that what the landlord would probably offer up in the form of TI um, let's say, you know, let's put 40 bucks in there. Um, that's what I think, because it's going to be an older building, 30 years old with no, no immediate upgrades. Um, now the tenant is going to also have to go back, go back and probably invest around $60 a foot or more, um, to get it to where they want it, uh, whoever that tenant may be. Um, so yeah, that's my thought process there. Okay, great. And the, you know, in the market rent in that area, this, you know, we're talking three years from now, uh, the expected rent $19 a square foot is actually, you know, pretty much on par. You can find office space in these, in these, in this town, in the surrounding town and in, in that range, 15 bucks, you find 20 bucks, depends, depends what it is, right? So if you had a single tenant um, office and, you know, you had some upgrades done, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect uh, 19 bucks a square foot three years from now for, for the rent. Hey, Tyler, uh, I want to back up here and, and challenge you a little bit. Where did um, you get the the 7.4 cap rate on a tenant renews and we sell? How did you come up with that? Um, I'm adding, they're, so they're coming in at 7% on to sell it right now. I'm, I'm using 7.4. I'm just adding five basis points a year for eight years. Um, and that's pretty much just on a... Uh, that's pretty much just because the building is older and we're not putting anything else into it. However, now that you're challenging me on that and I'm rethinking it, yeah, on the renewal, we should actually have a better cap rate. Um, yeah. If they yeah. renew. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. That's, that's a, that's a blunder on my part. I think, I think at least it should be the same as, as what we're, uh, as what we would assume for a new tenant and the same as what they're coming in on. Yeah, so I would, I would say it's even going to be better, right? Um, you know, they've got three and a half years remaining on this lease. Um, you know, traditionally, anything under 10 years is going to be significantly discounted. Um, now, with that said, this is a, a very good corporate-backed guaranteed lease. And so, you know, it's not going to have a major discount, I don't, I don't believe. But, you know, it should be better, theoretically then a, a new 15 year or 10 year lease should trade at a lower cap than a the building with a three and a half year term remaining on the lease you follow me so yeah. you know, yeah. if we think if we think that it's worth a seven today and we and i don't think you and i have given our uh, picks on that then if we think it's a seven today we have to believe it's under seven with a brand new 10 plus year lease, right? Um, that's my thought. You agree? Let's get, let's, get, five, let's get aggressive. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, right, let's drop it 25 base points. I agree with you. That's, that was, that's definitely uh, an oversight on my part. Uh, I'm so I'm so used to these longer leases that I'm just adding five basis points a year without even without thinking. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's 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 very fair. So, you know, in that case, if we were able to lower the cap rate, which you, you don't really ever want to bet on unless you have a good reason to, um, it could make this this investment more even more attractive. Yeah, something that points out to me before you 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 totally leave this is you know, it's an 8,600 square foot building. Um, you know, I, I don't know that they're going to be able to build a brand new building to their specs at a, at a better price than $19 a foot. So unless they're needing some significant upgrades to that building, um, unless that building has real issues that we don't know about um, or, VCA needs some new technology built into something. I don't know, just basically the unknowns. I don't see how they would go um, anywhere else 
if they've had, if they've been in this location and it's been successful for 30 plus years, there's no way that I don't want to, let me back up here. I do not believe that they can find dirt and build as competitive as they are currently. I think it would be significantly more uh, for their rent. And so I think just off the cuff, I don't know what dirt prices are in uh, this part of Georgia, but I can imagine paying a reasonable rate <clears throat> close to town, which is where this is located. I cannot imagine that they're going to get anything cheaper than what they currently have, which is a lot of times why uh, tenants may move out if they still want to service that market. So either A, they stay or B, their business isn't doing good enough. So they need to exit and according to their Google reviews. Um, and they had more more reviews than anyone else. Um, it looks like business is, is going good. The outlook for veterinary clinics um, is very good in the United States. Um, you know, some could argue that they're, they're starting to become overpopulated. Uh, being that there's more and more cl clinics opening up, maybe the demand is waning. But two clinics in a 20,000 plus town, there's still demand there. So I, I think this is uh, this has got a bright future currently until you tell me, show me something. Yeah, no, those are those are all great points. And, you know, even just looking at the scenarios, listening to you talk there, I could even I could even move that 90 percent up, I think, a bit. You know, that 5%, you know, you still have to have that percent in there in, in case for whatever reason, people just stop buying dogs in, in East Elegy. But, you know, the, the, the history doesn't, the history and, and just, you know, the market doesn't, doesn't look like they're going to be going anywhere. So. So that being said, um, let's look at, let's look at the IRR analysis with the going in cap rate of 7%, right? So, you know, with the, the small changes we made, you know, the unlevered IRR is 8.21%. And then if you were to sell this in eight years, you'd make 1.7 times on your money. The levered IRR is slightly positive using seven and a half percent as your loan rate. Is that is that still, are those still the going rates? Winston, has it changed at all? Seven, seven and a half is, is still a reasonable loan for this type of deal? Yeah, it is. It, it, it depends. This is a credit tenant, so it may be a little bit better. But remember, they have a lot less on the. the they have a lot less time remaining on their lease. So, seven and a half, I would say, is probably what folks are getting quoted today. So, so I mean, look, like this, you know, even at this going in cap rate, this isn't cash flow wise. This isn't a bad deal. You know, if you if you believe in the future of veterinarian clinics, if you you know studied studied the market, you know we we've given an overview of the market and we've given an overview um, of this asset. But I mean, you know, if you've studied the market deeply and you and you really believe that they're not going anywhere, um, this is an asset that cash flows. You know, you can even put up whatever leverage you need to put on it, um, and it's not going to kill you like a lot of deals we've been looking at, but where it has negative leverage, it has slightly positive leverage. So you you know you're not gonna you're probably not going to lever this to the moon, but you know, you can you could buy an asset like this with what you have and then lever, you know, the rest. So if that's 50 percent, if it's, you know, 40 percent, whatever. Right. Um, whatever you need. And then that's not going to change too much what you expect to make. So you can see here that the levered IRR is about 8.7 versus 8.2 on a 50 percent loan. Right. If you had 30 percent, it'd be 8.4. If you had 70 percent, 9.2. Right. So it doesn't it doesn't move too much. So basically, you you would tailor um, your 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 equity to the two, you know, whatever you need on an investment like this. Um, that being said, Winston, do you think that a seven cap is a reasonable purchase price? Hell, if I know at this point, um, I think that it, um, you know, obviously we hate negative negative leverage, you know, but there's a buyer out there for this. Um, and I think this could trade to the seven cap because it is a, a credit tenant. They've uh, been doing business in this building a long time. Um, yeah, you know, I think a seven cap on a credit tenant is pretty good right now, even considering this environment. How long has this been on the market, Tyler? Do we know? Mm, good question. Three I don't weeks? have it. I don't have it here right in front of me. I, I'm looking at it. It's about three weeks. Um, okay. 
you know, I think you could probably get it a little bit discounted. And, you know, I have it. I know you're probably going to show comps, but just looking at a double B rated bond, you know, um, you're not too far off. So. And just, you know, if you got a bit of a discount, for example, let's say you, you, you came in at a 7.28, you know, what would, yeah. the, what would that look like? Right. So, you know, that's even better. If you come in as at a seven seven two five seven three cap, um, you know you can expect an unlevered IRR close to nine percent, levered close to ten percent. Um, you know that's those are attractive returns. If if you believe that this tenant will stay in place, this market will remain stable, doesn't have to grow, just you know just stability. Um, this is this is a cash flowing asset. So you know I I don't think that the asking price is you know far from from where it'll close. I think it's, it's a very reasonable, um, in this environment, it's, it's, it's a very reasonable purchase for, for the right investor. Uh, I, I don't have much to, I wouldn't move it much from, from what they're asking, to be honest, unlike some of the other ones that we are asking for 200 basis point discounts and, uh, you know, trying to, trying to not get killed by the, by the, the high loan rates. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's tough. It's tough out there right now, but, you know, volume has definitely um, been impacted. You know, we see that on on our reports that we run and send out to people, which, by the way, if you're interested, uh, let us know and we will put you on the mailing list. But we see it on our data that, you know, volume is, is down year over year, quarter over quarter. Um, it's not surprising, right? We have we have the interest rates constantly increase, uh, increasing. So, but uh, to, to your point, um, I kind of like this one. I, I like it better to seven and a quarter, obviously, but you know, at first coming into this at a high level, I didn't think I would like it, but I do. I, I think it trades in that seven and a quarter, seven, three range, um, gives the folks a little bit of cash flow. Um, this will be, most likely a cash buyer, someone who just believes in the, um, you know, the pet space, the, the veterinary vet space rather. And, and I think it'll be a cash buyer. I think most buyers right now are cash buyers. Um, you know, there's still people you know, that have 1031 needs that, that may pick this up as well. So I don't think you asked me for my prediction, but I went ahead and gave it. I always want your prediction, man. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm keeping, I am keeping track now. So, Are six you? months from now, we're gonna, we're gonna go back and look. I'm, I'm putting it into Excel right now. But, but yeah, I, I guess I don't have much more on this. Um, you know, another, another net lease asset, a little different than what we were normally underwriting. Um, anything else from your side on this one? No, I think it was a good one. Um, you know, I'm, I feel very very bullish on the animal uh, and vet space, you know, going forward. So, you know, the, the only thing I would say on this one is it doesn't have a kind of that brand, that branding like Camp Bow, Bow Wow and, and kind of in those spaces, mm -hmm. but serving a small market, serving a real need in a good location. It's been there a long time. The, the replacement cost is going to be much higher than their current, um, you know, their current occupancy costs. So, unless there's just a lot of CapEx that they're having to put in um, to maintain that building, I see them staying. Yep, great. VCA Animal Hospital, if, you want, if you're interested, give us a shout or in, in anything net lease. Winston and myself, we're happy to, happy to underrate a deal, look at a deal, um, anything in the space, so. Yep. Well, thanks, brother. Talk to you soon. All right. Cheers, man. Thanks, everybody.